Um, right here in the front, if we can take the next question, yes. Mr. Chairman, this is Rebecca Newbard, a share owner. Good morning. My name is Becca Newbart, and I'm a student at Mount Holyoke College. Mr. Kent, I am here representing students all across the country who are working with their university administrations to go bottled water free. Our campus has a contract with Coca-Cola, but students at Mount Holyoke are making great strides in sending bottled water on a long hike off campus. We have reduced bottled water already by over 25% and we will have a bottled water free commencement this May. And we are just one of over 90 campuses that have joined 14 national parks and scores of businesses and cities across the country in taking actions to address the social and environmental impacts of bottled water. Yet the industry uses marketing to undermine public confidence in tap water. Coca-Cola has attempted to fundamentally change the way we think about water from a human right to something a corporation can profit from. Coca-Cola has shown it will stop at nothing to interfere in democratic policy to bolster its bottom line. It has meddled in national parks and global water policy. And as students, we face stiff resistance from corporations like Coke that have no place in undermining our efforts to protect our water and environment. The industry has created demeaning videos trying to convince us that there are more important issues to worry about and has emailed us pro-bottled water guides. My question for you, Mr. Kent, is, in light of the groundswell of national support for bottled water-free campuses, and in the interest of full transparency, can you detail the actions Coca-Cola has taken to interfere with the grassroots efforts of college students like me to help their institutions to go bottled water-free? Thank you. Let me uh, just say at the outset, that um, we have not interfered in any way or form. We continue to work very hard to make our bottled waters much more environmentally friendly. That is why this bottle and this bottle both are made partially from plants for the first time in the world using innovation capability. That's why those chairs that my three colleagues are sitting on are made from each from 111 bottles, PET bottles. That is why we had Will I Am last year talking about our Echo Cycle project, cycling, recycling. That's why we have the most ambitious recycling goals. And we believe that recycling is again part of this golden triangle. The di most difficult thing about recycling is actually getting the bottles collected, is actually raising awareness so that we can actually have curbside collection work effectively. It's not about making them into new things. And that's why this is a 100% recyclable bottle made 30% from sugarcane extract. We're working on innovation to make this from 100% sugarcane as opposed to fossil fuels. It is offering a choice is the key to consumers. And you're talking about the United States. Why is there such a big demand for bottled water across the country? Because that's what consumers want. We cannot dictate how consumers want a product in what form. We can just ensure that we provide the right labeling, we give the right information, we are transparent, and we provide a choice. In many parts of the wo world, bottled water saves lives. So this is not a one-size-fits-all model. We continue to evolve. We continue to learn. We continue to want to use our innovation to good purpose. That's why we were the first to create the technology for plant bottle. That is why we offered that same technology to Heinz a year and a half ago. That is why they are using it now, because it makes sense. It makes sense for the reasons that Mr. Wardlaw said earlier about global warming, about all of us having a role to play in transferring a better planet. The solution is not banning, taxing, 
the solution is working together to create intelligent, creative solutions. Thank you.